Let's kick things off and talk about data connectors because Power BI has a really robust connector library that allows you to access data from virtually anywhere. So when you open up Power BI Desktop, you can click on this Get Data button in the Home tab to access the Get Data dialog box. And this is where you'll see all of the sources available to you. And bottom line, there's a lot. You can connect to just about any type of source data, including flat files, Excel workbooks, folders, databases like SQL, IBM, Azure, online services, which are more specialized like GitHub and Salesforce, or other sources like web feeds, R scripts, Hadoop, and so on. So tons of options for connecting to data. Now, I'm not gonna speak to every single one of these, but let's fire up Power BI Desktop and I'll show you what this library looks like. Okay, so in this case, I've opened up a brand new instance of Power BI Desktop and it takes me to this splash screen here. I can just close this out or I can click Get Data right here on the left. Either way, I'm gonna end up in the same place, which is the Get Data dialog box, which looks like this. And again, if you know you're looking for something specific, like a SQL source, you can use that search bar and kind of narrow down your results. Otherwise, you'll default to this all list, which shows you just about all of the connections available to you. Now, some of the interesting ones to call out, looking at the file options, these are pretty common ones like text files, flat CSVs, contents from an Excel workbook. One of the interesting ones, which I'll show you a demo on later, is the folder. And this allows you to point Power BI to an entire folder containing files so that you can automatically append and blend new files as they're added to that folder over time. Really, really great automation technique, which again, I'll show you in just a bit. Database options kind of speak for themselves. You've got MySQL, Azure, IBM, all sorts of database options here. Online services has some interesting ones as well. Uh, Microsoft Exchange, Dynamics, and then some of the more specialized tools here like Google Analytics, Adobe, Salesforce, Facebook, GitHub, and MailChimp. Um, so definitely worth looking through the connectors that are available for you here. And then last but not least in the other tab, we've got some interesting ones in here as well can actually type in a web address to scrape data from a web source, or you could launch a blank query. And if you know how to write M code, you can generate a custom connection yourself. And we're actually gonna do a simple demo using a blank query by creating a dynamic rolling calendar that updates based on the current date. And we'll cover that later in the section. So it's important to note that in this course, I'm not gonna walk through these different types of connectors. And it's not because I'm lazy or because I don't want to, it's because the process is remarkably consistent and user-friendly across the board. So whether you're connecting to a database, a file, an online service, once you enter the specific information, you know maybe it's the server name and authentication for a database connection, for instance, once you get past that step, you always arrive at the same end result, which is the query editor. And that's where we're going to be spending most of our time. Now, for the purposes of the course and for ease of use, we're going to be using CSV files. Since they're simple, they're ubiquitous, you can download them straight from the course resources. But again, all of the concepts and tools that we cover in the query editor really apply to everything here, no matter the original source. So with that, let's move on and dive into the query editing interface.